Welcome back, you filthy exiles. Now, I was once really critical about Last Epoch, uh, and maybe wrongfully so originally, but considering where the game is right now, and uh, and the fact that it's coming out on the 21st of February, I think at this stage, we'll double check that one, I decided to jump back into the game and give it another go, and I was actually really pleasantly surprised at the state of the game and the amount of improvement that's occurred just in the last couple of years. Now, with significant changes of the campaign to the game over the last couple of a couple of years, as well as major graphical updates, as well as overall gameplay updates, I'm actually pretty happy to call this a second pick uh, only to Path of Exile right now. And uh, we might put that Diablo game into the fray here, but let's be real, it's, you know, uh, that's a bit of a contentious one. And uh, I actually think Last Epoch's so much better than Diablo. Uh, and funnily enough, it's made by a, much, by a much smaller studio. But anyway, we won't talk about that in this video. Now, the other great part about this game is that it has a dedicated list of creators in the background. And while I'm not an expert in this game, there are many others that are. And I'll put some of their links in the description below. And we'll cover off on that a little bit later in the video. Um, but they've been making content and guides in the background as well as tutorials, but there's something in this game that it does a little different uh, that other games don't do. Even PoE doesn't get this right, and this game actually picks up on that and does a really good job of it. Now, uh, for today, I wanted to cover off on a few, few things that make this game really cool and why I think it's worth your time trying it out uh, for when it releases in February, or maybe even pre-release. And there are a couple more classes that my understanding uh, is that the Falconer is coming out and there's another class that's set to come out on the release as well in 1.0, uh, which should be really cool. It already has some really dope summoning classes and the Necromancer is just like an OG Necromancer class. It's great. Uh, but honestly, for me, Path of Exile and PoE 2 are always going to be my main game. But I did find myself getting lost in the end game in Last Epoch when I got there the other night, mainly because the echo system more or less reminds me of Delve and uh, and that sort of scratches my itch. Uh, but the other thing in this game is it has a ton of builds that you can play. Funnily enough, the website that you can source these if you're not gonna look at Max Roll or, uh, or YouTube uh, is reminiscent of a, uh, another game that I was really fond of, which was Grim Dawn. And uh, funnily enough, there's a lot of mechanics in this game that are very similar to Titan Quest and I uh, found myself running through Nostalgia Lane as I was playing through. And I was like, hey, I've seen that sort of thing before in TQ because obviously TQ is one of my all time favorite games as well. But anyway, we'll talk about that in the video. Uh, anyway, let's get into uh, seven cool things in the last epoch that are potentially worth your time in checking out. Okay, so the first one that we're going to talk about here, we have our little communal area. That's pretty dope. I like that armor. Anyway, uh, the first thing that we'll talk about here is something that isn't really in Path of Exile and it's not done very well. And funnily enough, they did it in Last Epoch. There's an inbuilt game guide. Like, it goes through everything in gratuitous detail. Like, or at least in enough detail, you know, it tells you how many stacks you can stack of different things, the way that things stack. Uh, you know, Frostbite, it can stack an unlimited number of times, but only the first 30 stacks on a target increase its chance to be frozen. This game actually gives you information about how the game works within the game in a pretty easy to use, pretty easy to understand sort of way. They've even provided in-game screenshots here, which, and the calculation models too, the math of how the game works. You can definitely tell that this has been a community-driven game in that respect. Crafting Explanations gives you a bit of a run through in Crafting Explanations. It even self hyperlinks itself through to key information, probably a little bit uh, sort of finicky in areas. The way rarity works, it explains everything in layman's terms without having to go outside of the game and look for other resourcing. More or less, you can somewhat understand the game to a degree just from basically going into these windows here and sort of looking through and you go, hey, this thing dropped, what does this do? It talks about all of these sort of metrics and it looks like this has been pretty well put together uh, from the devs, but just a really cool little side feature that a lot of people tend to complain about in a lot of games. Um, it also tells you about the dungeon system, the region select, all that sort of tripe, but uh, a lot of it's just understanding the basic mechanics, how things stack and whatnot to get you started on putting your builds together. And that sort of leads into an area of this uh, video that I want to talk about later and the track which is builds. Builds are actually really easy to approach in this game and this is just one thing that sort of explains this. It explains the end game, the monolith of faith, faith which is the end game. 
introduction, goes through all the ins and outs, blessings, what are blessings, uh, goes through the quest echoes, what are quest echoes, what do they accumulate to, uh, all that sort of jazz covered off on this in this little guide here. It's simple but and elegant, but you know what? It's something that's not in a lot of games or not done in a lot of games very well, and I sort of like it. And it's just one thing that I mentioned that there's a little bit of in-game help, which is something that PoE doesn't do so well. Um, so yeah, that's the first reason why it's probably worth checking this game out. Okay, so the next thing that this game does, and knowing that we have a couple more classes coming into the game, is the class system is actually really cool. And the way that it does this is sort of reminiscent to the way that TQ does it, but not entirely the same. Um, and it sort of amalgamates the Ascendancy system, more or less, from Path of Exile, the Titan Quest multi-class system, even the leveling system to the way that you level up. Like I talk about Titan Quest because Grim Dawn is basically Titan Quest 2.0 without it being called that. Um, but basically you go into your character select and you have a base class similar to Path of Exile. Um, so in this case, you've got Sentinel, Necromancer, whatever. But beyond that, you then have mastery classes that are built into here where they have specialized skills and their own specialized trees. And we'll look at, look at that very shortly. Uh, and to the point, so you need to complete all the standard points in your base class. You've got to level that up. We'll talk about that very shortly. And then you can specialize in another class. One that I really did like playing at one point was Manifest Armor and basically spawn armor as a minion. And then it just Fs stuff up for you. And I found that really cool. Or the classic Paladin class. And yes, you can play a Holy Hammer skill in here as well. Uh, which doesn't show you initially in here, but there is a Holy Hammer skill or Warpath being Cyclone, whatever it might be. But let's have a look at the class leveling window and let's see what this actually looks like on a live character. Okay, so this is my Plasma Fireball dude. Um, I can't cast a spell to flex, but anyway, it's, it's pretty fun to play. It's like level 60 something, level 62. But anyway, this is very reminiscent to the way that... Oh, I'll move my camera out of the way. This is very reminiscent to the way that Titan Quest used to work. And basically what you do is you click through your different attributes or whatnot in here to sort of change the way that your, that your build works. If you want mana regen, you can find mana regen or mana shell into wisdom. If you want spell crit, you could come down and you could grab some spell crit here or there, you know, here or there, whatnot. And then basically you level this up. So you start with your, your mage, right? Your mastered mage mastery here you cap this out and then you can then specialize and then you can turn into a rune master once you get to end game i found you can go and you can get your last mastery here once you get to about level 58 60 um, and then you know the other option is you could play spellblade instead of sorcerer and each class has exactly the same setup and then basically you can modify the way that your character works like basically arcane moment momentum is almost like um you know Arcane Surge and Path of Exile sort of thing. And then you can get a attribute here that gives you the ability to um, get increased movement speed from that as well. And that stacks up as you cast more spells, which is really good with Fireball. And it's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, the class system is really lucrative. And you can always switch out spells and you can interchange, but you still have to level the points up in the tree to cap it out to access certain points. And then as you level up further, you get access to different skills because the skills are locked to the classes as opposed to like Path of Exile, which is a skill gem. As you level up, you get access to cooler stuff and that increases the power or access to your character to different skill sets. And that varies based on the mastery that you go for. So your skill set is locked to your masteries. It's, it basically works the same that the old Titan Quest or Grim Dawn trees work, but with a twist and we'll talk about the skills very shortly because that's where it gets really interesting. So yeah, really different approach it amalgamates good parts of a whole bunch of different games it doesn't necessarily do anything overtly unique but what it does do is it brings elements of things that are fun to play and level up in a what is essentially an ssf variant of the game which it will have a trading system from what i can see in the release information but we won't talk about that in this video um but yeah overall really cool system a, a really large array of skills that can be played because not only do we have this we have a separate skill leveling system and we're going to talk about that in the next part but yeah really cool class system really like it and it also leads into a ton of builds but we'll talk about that later in the video okay so the next thing we're, we're going to look at for anyone who didn't know how this works is how the skill system levels up so the first element here is understanding that yes, okay, as you play through the game, you'll get access to certain skills that will present themselves as available, right? 
So there's not an item or a gem that you socket into gear. Um, some gear may actually give you access to different things as well. Um, but basically you unlock skills as you level up. It's very reminiscent of an old school ARPG, uh, you know, and I, and I like it for that. It's simple. It's, it's, you know, it's basic and we know it well, but where it gets really interesting is the leveling system that goes around the skill gems. And it's very, very similar to Path of Exile. So you get your skill, you put it in one of your sockets, right? You get five sockets, you unlock more sockets or slots. Once you level up, that's pretty normal for any ARPG or MMO, right? We can all, we're all on the same page as that. But this is when it gets really cool. Each skill has its own individual leveling tree. And that leveling tree mo modifies the skill aberrantly. Now, this isn't like a new concept. This is in different games. It's not something new. But I think it's really amalgamating elements, again, from different games and pushing it into one system. And I like it. So it's not an elaborate tree like Path of Exile, right? Um, and this is not something that in, existed in like Grim Dawn or TQ from my understanding. It was a lot more rudimentary, just level the skill up and the higher the skill points, the better the skill. But this also allows you to change the way that skills work, similar to support gems. So basically you can have dancing, fire and embers, right? So, you know, that changes the way the projectiles interact. Or you can have multiple projectiles and then you can have Arcane, arcane Divergence here, which means you get a lot more projectiles to the point where eventually you can convert them to, you know, 100% stun chance or a high level of stun chance and remove crit or remove crit altogether. In the case of my build, I actually converted my fire damage to lightning damage running plasma ball. So they have like an edge of like uh, blue on the edge of them and the skill you can visibly see changes. And I think that's really cool because then you proc lightning and there's a bunch of different masteries in the rune mastery, a bunch of different sort of passives in the rune mastery uh, room master mastery and whatnot that or sorcerer mastery that allow you to modify uh, damage with lightning and or shock um, attributes and stacking shock on enemies now beyond that you could go with unchained fire here which allows you to do a flamethrower skill attribute here and then you can modify through and turn into a infernal, infernal legacy which gives you length um, and or you could have eternal fire which means it costs less and you can cast it more often um, or you could just straight up do volatile flames and have your fireballs just literally blow up on enemies, which I sort of did because you can sort of do a couple of these really well. Or maybe you want to run Ignite and you can run Spreading Flames. Um, and also you can have Heat Seeking Fireballs, which I did have and I have since unspecced for some unknown reason. I'm not sure why I did that, but it's really cool having Heat Seeking Fireballs. Um, but yeah, anyway. Moral of the story, you can do this with every skill set. So you can have Rain of Fire, so this is Meteor. You can basically convert, uh, you, well, you can have this casting a lot of Meteors in one spot, um, or you can convert the way that it behaves and you can increase its AOE instead of less hits, uh, more hits, less hits. The other thing that I did is items can drop in the game that can vastly manipulate the build, i.e. Meteors in this case are converted to Lightning Strikes and then you get 115% increased uh, lightning damage. So uniques in this game are actually really cool. This is the same with a lot of um, MMOs and ARPGs, but I don't know, it just feels like it's been really well done in this game and I like it. So yeah, the skill system is really lucrative and you can do the same thing with minions. There's some cool items here that allow you to do like the claw. So you can have the maximum number of your companions can all be wolves if you're running the beast uh, primalist or beast master. So you can do a wolf summoner. I've heard there's a squirrel summoner build thanks to Zisserin. It was an item that was created for Zisserin in particular. So you can do a squirrel summoner. There's an auto casting harbinger of stars belt. Like these are just some of the uniques in the game that are crazy. Um, you can also have Bone Harvester, like there's a lot of really cool, unique sort of things that you can do with um, unique items, i.e. Sunwreath allows you to ignite with melee hits and it adversely increases your fire dot over time. Uh, and then basically Flame Reave hits uh, enemies in an expanding circle around you, so you can do Flame Reave and ignite everything, um, which is basically giving you the ability to really easily build lucrative and really cool builds and uh and yeah i like that it, it means that even the uniques that drop you can come up with aberrant you know varieties to builds and whatnot that seem really cool and a lot of potential combinations that may never existed previously and you can build things that are completely unique to your playstyle. and i think that's a really cool feature of the game the best thing beyond that point is that in last epoch unlike games like poe and even d2 
it's very easy to scale your builds. Now, I'm not talking about like the full on upper end players, but that period where you get to like level 60 um, into early 58, uh, when you get access to monoliths, when you get into early echoes farming, where in like PoE, if your build's not working by the end of Act 10, it's a bit shit and it's going to take a while to recalibrate that. In last epoch, it sort of corrects itself really easily and you pretty quickly notice the power uplift and it makes it a lot of fun playing the game. I don't know. I just find it enjoyable. Anyway, uh, that's one of the really other really cool features is the skill system. It's not by any means something that's like crazy unique and innovative. It just sort of mashes a whole heap of really cool concepts together from different games that we've all played. And it does it well. I think it does it really well. Um, in particular, I know Necromancers are the number one class that's played it in uh, last epoch right now based on the website but we'll talk about that soon okay so big question now here this is what number four we're at is uh what is the end game like like we've seen games like walson that was pretty mundane um diablo 4 which let's not talk about that uh, we're all disappointed with that one to this day um, but yeah, well, what happens in the end game in Last Epoch? Well, let me answer that question more or less. Basically, once you get to around level 58 or you beat the campaign, and it takes about like about the same amount of time as PoE, like anywhere from 6 to 10 to 12 hours to beat the campaign. So it's not a huge campaign and it's good because the end game is where the fun actually starts. You unlock what is called the, uh, the Monolith of Fate. So uh, we're going to go into this and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so you enter the monolith of fate, right? And then you're like, okay, what do I do here? Well, it's basically like the Diablo 3, like adventure mode sort of thing. We click on the monolith and it presents us with basically a delve node system from Path of Exile. And as you can see, I've already sort of hit it up. Uh, this game's entire end game is basically delve. And I really like it. I think it's cool. And so basically on these nodes, you get to the point where, you know, you can do, you know, whatever, um, you know, you get whatever attributes, it gives you a amount of time, it has different missions. But the thing that I'll reiterate, right, at no point does it have multi-tiered phased missions like in Diablo 4, where it's so incredibly frustrating, you don't feel like you're progressing at all and or you're just ripping teeth out. Now... I'm not 100% sure what happens once you cap out the stability, which I did do. It appears that these missions come up as you're playing through, but let's run one so you can see what it looks like. So we're gonna go to a level 58 area and like, the, uh, like Path of Exile, this is just more or less progress it as you go, continue to level up and uh, and continue to progress your monolith, your echoes and your monoliths of faith until you reach like end game bosses and whatever. Um, now, is this like, very robust not necessarily at this stage is still sort of progressing but it takes quite a bit of time to get to level 100 from my understanding so this is a wave to wave uh map basically you just got to defeat all the waves regretting taking my bloody homing ability off And it actually gets quite challenging if you have a squishy character like mine, and I'm disappointed with myself because that is not how I play ARPGs. But basically, with this one, there's all different types of missions you can have. As you can see, that's my lightning strike ability. I actually really think the graphics in this game are quite good. Um, considering, you know, where they were and where they are now, they've really improved in this game. So different, mo different echoes will have boss encounters. Some will have trigger points that you have to go after or camps that you have to fight. And if you die, you lose the, you lose the benefit of completing the, um, the echo. So I've got to try and get used to it saying the word echo. Uh, so if it's got a unique that you'll garner as a, as an end game and, and, you know, echo reward, you'll lose that if you die basically and you won't get access to an end echo chest as well is what I'm going to call it. So we'll just complete this, we're about halfway through. This obviously gets harder as you level up more. We'll get there eventually. Man, I really wrecked him. Level 63 unlocked. Oh yeah, I gotta turn that off.
And the fire aura still skill that you can see around me, there are skills like RF and whatnot in the game as well. So yeah, you could basically replicate builds from other games from Path of Exile or Diablo, take your pick. There's very similar skill setups. I just did Fireball because it was really cool and uh, and I like playing Fireball. Man, I miss, I miss homing Fireballs. Alright, we're nearly there. Alright, so, you'll complete the Echo, you'll conquer it, and then you'll go back to the Echo area. If you've completed it Deathless, you'll get the reward, and also you'll get access to an Echo Chest here, which drops various stuff. And based on the difficulty level and, you know, whatever the rarity find or whatever, that'll manipulate the outcome. And then basically, you just rinse and repeat, and so you continue to progress from there. Be to it. Uh, and then, yeah, that's basically it. So, yeah, that's the end game right now. Now... Uh, is there room for growth? Absolutely, and I reckon they'll add a whole heap of mechanics, but in 1.0, similar to like when uh, Path of Exile first came out, this is basically very reminiscent of when Path of Exile first came out, and I'm all for it. I think it's a good system, and I think this is a lot of fun. It's got a lot of potential to progress further, um, and you can do a lot with this, but uh, I think it's a creative way to approach mapping, um, and you know, it reminds me of Delve, so it basically gets an automatic win on that front too. But yeah, that's a, yet another reason to look at the game. It's got a, actually a pretty engaging end game. Okay, so the next thing that's actually really cool about Last Epoch is build accessibility. Now, we're, unlike games like Path of Exile, for example, there's a fair bit of layering in the way that you build builds, and certain skills don't really scale at the same rate that other skills scale at, and that seems to be quite sort of the norm. Um, but the best thing about Last Epoch is you can load up different skills and basically take a gamble and 9 times out of 10 they're actually going to work. And not to mention there's a lot of really cool, unique um, items that drop in the game that basically lend themselves into variations of different skills. That's pretty normal in most ARPGs and there are actually builds online already from a pretty dedicated community and I'll put a link in the description to this website where you can check out different videos and content creators um, around exactly that, different builds. Now, there's a few creators in here. Dreadfall's been making builds for some time, um, or Epoch builds, um, Trickster, Ban. Like, there's a bunch of different dudes in here just making a ton of builds all the time. And similar to, like, our Path of Exile tools, you know, you have, like, the numbers of different classes that are played, um, you know, the skills that are yeah, I guess like the highest priority of skill sets, like very similar to like poe.ninja sort of stuff. And what this site's actually really reminiscent of is Grim Dawn builds and very similar to Titan Quest, actually basically the exact same tool set, but with Last Epoch. So there are a ton of guides out there. If you're looking at builds or you're a little confused about what you could start as or whatnot, if you follow these creators and I'll put some links in the description to them, um, as well as this website, then yeah, there's tons of build content that's out there, especially for when 1.0 hits. Been around for a little while now, so it's tried and true and tested. But big plus side, the accessibility of builds nonetheless is really easy. You can pick up a character, level it up. Basically, most skills will work into the end game, and obviously, once you get there, you then need to scale it. But the way that I would pitch this game is like it's an intermediate between like Diablo 3, where basically you just smack on 10,000 or 100,000 uh, percent increased damage modifier armor and Path of Exile. It's like a little sort of slice mark in between that difficulty level where you can pick up different skills. If you scale them to end game, they'll eventually work. Um, unlike Path of Exile, where basically if you F a build up, that's it, it's dead. Um, but then it's still not so easy that like it sort of trivializes the process of making a build work which means if you're someone who wants to create builds this game will actually allow you probably a lot more flexibility with a little less skill level and will actually sort of push you forwards and teach you how to do that as you go as well um so it's just one of the other really cool qualities of the game that i like so far by the way too i'll just add that it last epoch does have a build planner so, yeah, you can play around with different uniques and things like that too. So, uniques, blah, blah, blah. Just play around and see what works. And come up with different combinations and stuff like that. So, yeah, that, that's also a thing. I'll put a link to this in the description below. 
and yeah you can tick around different skills that you want to use and then level them up and passives and all that sort of jazz um to figure out what your build is going to take the form of and then yeah so you can do some like technical build planning and things like that before you start um and we're going to talk about loot filters next as well so yeah we'll go from there Okay, so another really cool feature that uh, I was actually talking to stream about when we were doing some playtesting a couple weeks ago was actually inbuilt loot filters. So not like PoE where you've got to use a whole separate website, import the tool or whatever. You can do that, sort of. Um, but yeah, so if you go into game settings, you go underneath gameplay, you can go to loot filter. You can actually create on the fly loot filters. So you can add rules to your loot filters. And obviously this is not something that I'm an expert at at this stage of the game and there are much better people at that um but yeah you can actually then add conditions you can add all sorts of different things about your loot filter edit your rule name all that sort of jazz um and then basically modify how you want your filter to work so emphasize select colors yep confirm add a condition you want a certain affix to drop and then you can go through and click that affix and the sort of leveling that you want and then yada 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 you can go and add that in bam you can add that and then you can change the loot filter's name and what's even better is you can even export that loot filter you can copy it to clipboard or open a custom filter location and update out on your pc to give it to your friends so just another really add like an added quality of life sort of benefit which means that you can also download loot filters online um and or import from other people uh, that you know have got some cool loot filters and whatnot and i'm sure there's plenty of sources uh, if we go searching for it but uh yeah just a really like na nice added quality of life feature that you can change over time which means that in this game if you're playing a particular archetype that you want to play you could set your loot filter up in a way before you start leveling through that would target for specific drops that your character would benefit from so you could have your loot filter completely tailored to the way that you want to play your character looking for and spiking gear that you want to see and hiding everything else that you don't want to see which is actually really cool and is actually something that poe doesn't do so well uh but yeah anyway just another really cool feature of the game that i thought i'd mention here and i didn't even know until i started talking to the guys at stream who were last epoch fans and I was like, that's actually a pretty cool feature and I really like it. So yeah, just a really nice quality of life sort of thing and another reason to sort of draw you in and have a look at the game. Okay, so another big area of the game is actually in the forge. Um, now there's better creators um, and one in particular is Warlog who, um, who has a pretty good video on this and I'll put a link in the description to his video. But Last Epoch actually uses what's uh, similar to if you're a Path of Exile player, Rog Crafting as its standard base of crafting. And basically how that works is you take any item that's craftable, right? You bash it in your forge. Now, as you sort of collect, sh uh, I guess, fragments and whatever on the ground, runes of refinement and glyphs and whatnot, you'll also be able to deterministically craft on your items. So you have what's called forging potential, which is similar to ROG. You only have so many rolls that you can make on a piece of gear before that's it. You're not going to be able to craft on it any further. And then basically what you do then is you pick the modifiers that you want to add to it. Um, so then basically, you know, I want to add dexterity to my gear. Um, I can add that affix. And then beyond that, my forging potential will go down as I level things up. So then I can, you know, I get one extra dexterity, but I lose five forging potential. You can see this go down. And then beyond that, you know, cold resistance, I want to increase that. I only have 10 forging potential left. And then I have zero. So this item can no longer be crafted on or anything like that. I can't do anything with this item. Now, I'm not an expert in crafting in this game, but also what I found in leveling up early characters was this was such an easy way to tune your character on the fly and basically control the level of power output that you're going to get throughout the leveling process and then into the end game once you start getting better items dropping. And because there's an abundance of drops and, you know, and whatnot, it's actually quite easy to get gear for your character within reason um, and with the inclusion of eventual trading systems and things like that um, this is actually a really cool system and all it means is you know you've got a high probability of getting the right rolls on your gear without having to do all the muck around that we have to do in path of exile and for a simpler game i guess that's a really good thing now path of exile is a much more complex and robust trading system <laughs> But this game is not trying to be Path of Exile. This game is something that's a little bit simpler. 
and deterministic crafting in a game like this is fantastic and i'm all on board with that so if you're looking for a game that is quite easy to craft your gear it's easy to sort of level up and tune your character on the fly this is definitely something that's going to stand out to you i find crafting in this game very simplistic and it's early days at this stage so it very clearly identifies prefixes and suffixes too like it really steps you through this process which i really like um, but yeah, if you're looking at learning more about ARPG game systems, things like that, this game actually has a really, really simple and powerful crafting system, so you can make character. and this comes back to my comments about, you know, the level scaling in the game. It's really easy to craft the gear that you want, um, and so yeah, you can really target away and make a juicy character with not a lot of effort required at all. And I think that's great because it helps you push into that end game and enjoy the end game as opposed to grinding out for days on end, trying to get a build to work, trying to find enough currency to be able to craft your gear when basically, yeah, you can deterministically craft that gear up, have OP gear and then just scale that gear up as you go and then continue to do that rinse and repeat, um, which is why builds are so accessible. But anyway, that's probably reason number seven why I'm actually thinking this game's a pretty good bloody buy. Okay, so just as a bit of a final note, I guess the biggest comment I'd make about this game is, well, it's probably not as complex as Path of Exile at this stage. It has a lot of room to grow at 1.0 with a few years in, I guess, open beta um, and a fair bit of content to start the journey. It's sort of at the same pace as where Path of Exile first came out, probably spent a bit more time in development. Um, where basically it can go a lot of places. It has the potential for leagues similar to Path of Exile. I think they call it Cycles in Last Epoch, or we'll call it Cycles. Uh, there's definitely a trading system coming into the game, a faction system. I'll put links in the descri description to the videos I cover off on that briefly. There's a 10 minute, de 10 minute dev diary about that. We've definitely got the Falconer coming into the game, so new classes are being added on release, which makes it even more appealing. But the biggest thing is that its level of entry is pretty good. Like, you can be a casual player and do exceptionally well in this game from what I can see and from even how I feel as a bit of a casual player myself, uh, especially coming from a game as complex as Path of Exile. I feel like sometimes Path of Exile is incredibly complicated unnecessarily so. And this game is like a nice middle ground for the players that don't want to go and invest, you know, their entire weekends and whatnot and just want to have a little bit of a, uh, a fun ARPG gaming experience. I think at the same time, it also is a strong contender to be a Diablo 4 killer because just straight up, it's better than Diablo 4. That's my opinion. Uh, obviously, different people will express themselves differently about that. But genuinely, once upon a time, I didn't think that about the game. I thought the game wasn't as great as what it's turned into. And I'm pleasantly surprised to say that this is definitely a game that's worth, I guess, putting the few dollars that it's worth on Steam uh, into and having a bit of a crack at if you want a bit of a fun experience. Obviously, 1.0 is out uh, in later Feb. I definitely reckon it's worth checking out. I'll be streaming it myself, and I'm sure many other ARPG players will be as well. And fingers crossed it develops into a huge audience following and will actually be a strong contender to be, a, I guess, a simpler version of an ARPG that's not necessarily in direct competition with Path of Exile, but fits into a parallel with Path of Exile for those players who don't want to take the bite into a more complicated game, but want to play something a little bit simpler, but not as simple as Diablo 3, and definitely not as simple as Diablo 4. Uh, but that being said, uh, you know, in the words of other creators, <laughs> Diablo 4 bad, Last Epoch good. Anyway, I'll leave you guys with that. And uh, if you like this video and this type of content, let me know in, in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to drop the video a like and uh, and sub to the channel. And also, I'm, I stream on Twitch quite regularly, uh, in particular with Path of Exile content. So, and hopefully some Last Epoch content. So yeah, if you want to check me out over there, don't forget to uh, head over to Twitch and then yeah, uh, drop me a follow over there. Anyway, until next time, uh, have a good one and I'll see you guys later.